So here we got the gigantic UV light that I just got in from AliExpress. It came quite battered, as you can see. So a box, a shipping, a little worse for wear, but uh, let's see what we got here. Typically I use my Gelish, which is fantastic light. Uh, it's got all metal inside, so it gets really, really good uh, curing, but as you can see, the opening is really quite small. So trying to get my stands in there, if I'm doing more than one, it can be a real pain in the butt. So I was looking for something a lot bigger uh, when dealing with the press-ons. Yeah, I've tried some other like generic lamps and that over the years and have just found that none of them really cure as well as my gelish. I needed to try something a little bit bigger. So here it is. It's bigger. <laughs> it's so, so bigger. So we'll see. Nothing fancy or exciting going on. We've got 10 second, 30, 60, 120, and a 99 LED screen for it to show up, I guess. Inside we have got a power adapter and cord. This thing is huge. Okay, so it is all plastic. The very minimal instruction user manual. Now I will run a test with it for black and white because those are typically the most difficult you run across for curing. That you'll end up with wrinkling and ripples and not curing properly. I've got our cords here. It does take quite a bit of uh, wattage to run this sucker, but it's got lots of lights in it, so that should be kind of good. Very simple powerful. And let's get it all plugged in and see what it does. All right, it's all plugged in now. It does have a nice long cord on it, which is really nice because I find with a lot of them that you get, end up with these teeny, teeny short cords. So you have to be using extension cords all over the place. So we'll power it on. Let's see if we can look inside while it's doing it. Looks fairly decent. Again, though, a reflector bottom will be a good idea. I'll toss a mirror under there. I've got see no one here that I can place inside like so but I might want to get another one or some type of longer one to have set up in there I have to do a black and white color swatch to see what kind of curing we get from that it is big it is so big that it takes up a huge portion of my desk so I'll have to figure out a way to set that up now. <laughs> okay, so I've had a chance to use this a little bit. First thing that I've noticed is that it is rather cheaply made. It is not very sturdy. You can see I barely touch it and it's just going all over the place. And that's just because it doesn't have any side support whatsoever. It's only the very back piece that touches it. The thing that I've been noticing which could mean that it's actually got some really good uh, light in it, is that, because I'm not used to such a big open wide space, that I've been curing a lot of my brushes. <laughs> so I'll be working, it's typically over in the corner of my table, and I'll be working and usually I would just, you know, be working and leave a brush with my palette over here and keep you know, painting with something else. And I'm curing and finding out when I go pick up my brush that, um, now the end of the brush is cured a bit. So so that's going to take a little getting used to. As well, so shifting my palette somewhere else, as well as possibly uh, finding a way to close in the side a little bit. I still have a really big open space to be putting stuff into, but maybe not as much light spillage coming out of the sides. You'll notice that I did throw a mirror right into the center here. That's good for giving reflection from the bottom. Um, you can see the LEDs without me having to 
uh, move the camera or put it upside down or anything. It's just the plastic LEDs and it's a white plastic topper. So I may go ahead and cover the top with foil and then break out the spots where all the LED lights are. See if that possibly helps if there's any curing issues. Give a reflective surface on the top as well as the bottom. What we're going to do now is test out some whites and blacks because I do find that those are typically the colors that you're going to find that do wrinkle, especially if your light isn't quite as strong. So I've got some uh, Luxa polish, black and white, and I've got some uh, Madame Glam black and white. I do find that the Luxa does have a tendency to wrinkle if it's not in a really good strong lamp. And I was running into the issues with that with some of the other more generic lamps that I was buying as opposed to using my uh, Gelish 18G, which I have no issues with curing anything at any time, but it is very small and it has a very small opening. So trying to get my press on stands and such in there, real pain in the butt. So yeah, we'll do some swatches on some old pop sticks I've got here and uh, see how these turn out. So I've done a generous layer of black, not overly thick, but I didn't try and keep it super thin. So this would be just a typical opaque coverage that you would go ahead with. And we'll see how it does. I'll also try out the white. There you can see, I'm not trying to keep it thin, but I'm not going too crazy on a thick layer. Okay, so now that was a 60 second cure. For the black, I'll put it through for the white again. As well and what do you know there is no wrinkling at all yeah I'd say I'm not disappointed in that Let's see this one sorry the lighting it's not the greatest but although you can't see it necessarily I can see that there is no wrinkling whatsoever there's a, bit, a little bit of bumps that you might see, but that was just from my being sloppy putting it on. So I'm going to try and go a little bit thicker on this next layer and see if I can create any problems. Okay, so this next layer I threw on there and I really kind of just tried to float it, you know, go nice and thick <laughs> just to see what we end up with. I would never usually paint a black on that thick just because they are prone to wrinkling. You're much, you're always much better off going with two thin coats than one really thick coat. We'll go nice and thick on the white as well here and see what it does. But yeah, my biggest issue with some of the generic lamps in the past I've tried a few out was just that they were at risk of wrinkling and that's just not something you want to deal with when you're working on a set that you've put time into and you pop it in there and next thing you know you got wrinkles all over that you got to deal with so those lamps are not worth trying to deal with so again really thick coat let's see what it's done Oops, it's gonna touch the black, so I'll take that out. Well, there you have it. I did get some <laughs> white on because I touched it when I popped it in there, but there is not a wrinkle in there, and I really slathered that on. I gotta say, let's see if you can see it better there. I gotta say, I'm actually truly impressed. I was expecting wrinkling. I was expecting that I'd have to be very, very gentle with this lamp and make sure that I was, you know, maybe not using it for dark colors and only using it for my light stuff. But yeah.
that has performed beyond what I would have expected. And let's see our white now. Sorry, I got a reflection there. Yeah. No wrinkling whatsoever. I'm thrilled. Okay, so now these are the ones I typically have problems with. I think just because their formula is much thicker, more opaque. But uh, still, I'll try the Madame Glam polishes and see what they do for black and white. And I'll be right back. So here's the Madame Glam first layer. Again, I'm putting this on really nice and thick. Just slathering that on. Pop it in. And the white. Yeah, you can see where that blue light comes out that you have brushes kind of sitting around here. They're getting they're getting zapped by it, so. I'd considered moving it to the other side of my desk, but I don't know. I don't know what's going to work for that. All right, really thick and gloopy. Again, not what I would do on a client or on a set, because you always want to work in nice thin coats, but this is just simply testing. We're going to get some bad wrinkling here because... Typically, the thicker you put it on, the much more likely you're going to be ending up with wrinkling happening. So, and that one goes in, this comes out, and yeah, not a wrinkle to be had. Nice and smooth, and that was thick, <laughs> like real thick. Like, I would never layer polish that thick, but, hey, thick black pigment, one coat, super coverage, and uh, not a wrinkle to be found. I have a feeling we're going to find the same thing happening with the white here in just a second. Perfect. No wrinkling whatsoever. So, if you struggle like me with needing extra space when you're shifting all kinds of different stands into your into your nail lamp, I do absolutely love my Gelish, but it is nice to have a second one. Well, in this case, I think I'll be using this for the most part, but I tend to use these if I'm doing uh, just quick solid sets. Nothing but a solid color. And these, especially these rounded ones, were a real pain to be getting inside my my small opening of my Gelish. And there you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So there is three sets of nails in there. And we've still got room for more on the ends. And again, these push all the way back. So there's lots of space in there. I mean, I wouldn't recommend layering like out front here just because your uh, LEDs don't start until about here. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, you would have a lot more space to keep spreading out a few more on the sides here. And still not worry about your stands touching each other and uh, getting paint transfer. Yeah, so that's four sets in there, four 10 piece sets in there right now. And you've still got some space if you wanted to. So I'd say for the, I think with shipping for me here in Canada, it came to about $75 and not unhappy that I spent that. So it seems like it'll be a pretty good investment for whipping through to get uh, more sets into the light to cure and move things along a lot quicker. So there you go. Thanks a lot.